Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to explain the stack data structure. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you wouldn't mind, please like, comment, and subscribe. One like equals one prayer for the YouTube algorithm. All right, everybody, stacks. A stack is a LIFO data structure. LIFO is an acronym for last in, first out. This allows us to store objects into a sort of vertical tower, like a stack of books or a stack of CDs. We use the push method to add objects to the top of the stack and the pop method to remove objects from the top. So here's a real life example of us creating a stack data structure. After declaring our stack, we can add objects to our stack. The objects that we'll be adding are various video games. To add an object to our stack, we use the push method, like we're pushing something onto our stack. So let's push Minecraft onto the bottom of our stack. And then next we'll add Skyrim, then maybe some Doom, then Borderlands, and then Final Fantasy VII. So this is a LIFO data structure, last in, first out. To access objects on the bottom of our stack, we first need to pop or remove objects from the top of our stack. If I need to access Minecraft on the bottom, I don't want to pull this from the bottom because everything on the top is going to fall, right? So that's kind of the concept. So in order to access Minecraft on the bottom, I need to pop or remove objects from the top in order to access objects on the bottom. So in order to access Minecraft, I need to remove all the games on the top of my stack. So that's kind of the point of a stack data structure. Now let's create a stack. The language you use really doesn't matter for the most part. You can implement a stack in Java, Python, C++, C Sharp. The language really doesn't matter. However, the syntax might be slightly different. I just so happen to be using Java, so I'll stick with that. Now to push objects onto our stack, we first need to declare our stack and instantiate it. So let's do that. Stack. Then we will list the data type of the objects that we will be adding to our stack. Luckily, strings are a type of object and they're fairly simple. So we will create a stack that can store strings, the names of video games. And I will name the stack stack to keep it simple. Stack stack equals new stack. And I will list the data type and then add a constructor. Okay, so we now have a stack data structure. Now with stacks, they have five unique methods. Let's take a look. Now with stacks, we can push an item onto the top of our stack. We can pop an item from the top of the stack. We can peek at the item at the top of the stack. We can check to see if our stack is empty and we can search our stack for an item. So those are five unique methods available to stacks. Let's first check to see if our stack is empty. So let's use system.out.println stack.empty method. And currently our stack is empty. That is true, but that'll change soon. So let's push some games onto the top of our stack. So we type the name of our stack, stack, and use the push method, then pass in our object. So we will pass in a string, the name of a video game. Let's add Minecraft first. Then let's add Skyrim. Then Doom. You can pick your own games if you want, I don't care. Then Borderlands. And then Final Fantasy VII. FFVII. Okay, let's check to see if our stack is empty now. So let's move this line of code to the bottom. And run it. So our stack is no longer empty, this returns false. So with the stack, we can at least take a look at the items within the stack without removing them. So let's use system.out.println and I will print my stack. So this will print all of the objects within my stack, beginning with Minecraft, then Skyrim, Doom, Borderlands, and Final Fantasy VII. However, by printing our stack, we're not removing items from the stack, so that's completely fine. So this time, let's pop the topmost item from our stack by using the pop method, stack.pop. And we don't need to list an object because pop will always remove the topmost object from our stack. So now Final Fantasy will be missing from the top of our stack. So if I was to repeat this again, well then this will remove Borderlands, and then Doom, then Skyrim, and then lastly, Minecraft. Then if you pop again, this is what happens. 
an exception. Empty stack exception. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, when you pop the topmost object from a stack, this will actually return that object. If you need the object from the top of the stack, you can pop it and then assign it to something. So let's say string my fave game equals stack dot pop. And then I will print my fave game. And this will print Final Fantasy VII. And it should be missing from the top of my stack if I was to print my stack. So Final Fantasy VII is no longer in my stack because I popped it, then assigned it to the string variable of my favorite game. So in order to take the topmost object from a stack, you use pop and then assign it to something. If you ever need to take a look at what the topmost object is within your stack, you do not want to use pop because that will remove it. You can instead use the peak method of stacks. So what I'll do is system.out.println stack.peak and then immediately follow this with printing my stack. So let's run this. So the top most item within my stack after using the peak method is Final Fantasy VII. Then after printing my stack, Final Fantasy VII is still at the top of my stack. So if you ever need to take a look at the object that is at the top of the stack without removing it, you can simply use the peak method. If you need to search for an object within the stack, you can use the search method. Let's print stack dot search. And we pass in our object as an argument. So the very first item in a stack will have a position of one. You would think it's zero, but it's actually one. Now let's find borderlands. That will be in position two from the top. Then doom would be, of course, three. Skyrim is four. Then Minecraft is five. So if you search for an item that is not within the stack, like Fallout 76, well then this will return negative one. If search does not find this object within your stack, it will return negative one. So with stacks, we can actually run out of memory. So let's add like a billion copies of Fallout 76. We find Bethesda's warehouse of unsold Fallout 76 games. So we'll create a stack of a billion copies of Fallout 76. We can do this using a for loop int i equals zero as long as i is less than like one billion that's probably close enough increment i then we will push a copy of fallout 76 to our stack so stack dot push fallout 76 and this is what happens a few moments later so we will run into an out of memory error due to the Java heap space. So it is possible to run out of memory when adding objects to our stack. Now this is an interesting feature that may or may not happen to you. If you add a billion copies of Skyrim onto a stack, Damn it, Todd Howard, you did it again. Now, what are some uses of stacks? Here's a few examples. One, we can use them in undo redo features in text editors, like when we go to edit, then undo typing, or redo typing, we can move back or forward through browser history by hitting the back or forward button in the top left corner of most web browsers. We can implement them in backtracking algorithms if we need to navigate a maze or search through file directories and another is that we use them when calling functions. Whenever we call a function, we add what is known as a frame to the call stack, but I'll probably save this topic for another video. So in conclusion, everybody, a stack is a LIFO data structure. Last in, first out. It stores objects into a sort of vertical tower, a stack of objects. You use the push method to add objects to the top and the pop method to remove objects from the top. So those are stack data structures. In the next video, we'll be covering queues, which work a little bit different. So if you can, give this video a thumbs up and drop a random comment down below. But yeah, that is a stack data structure in, well, computer science. Hey you, yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learned something new, then help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.